Well, hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the DC Capstone Report. It's great to be back here on our week to, uh, to look at the ball game we played last week and for another up and coming game this week. So I want to thank everybody for tuning into the podcast on Alabama football. Uh, we've had such a great following over the last few weeks. It's been just ex- uh, exciting for me and Lance to look out there and to see who all's looking and talking about our podcast. So it's been really appreciate you guys. Everyone that's listening right now, we thank each and every one of you because it's just so important for us to have listeners that, that want to l- listen to what we have to say. And it's been, it's been very uh, humbling to us to look and see how many people have listened to what we have to say about it on football. So I want to thank you for listening to our podcast. And I want to thank Lance Shores, who always is back there in the studio, who makes this happen. He puts it together. He produces it each and every week. And just uh, just just can't say enough good things about Lance. And I want to thank my sponsors, FreelancePictures.com and RollTideBama.com. Those are two sites that Lance puts up some great uh, football content on and great pictures. So if you uh, want to see some wonderful pictures from the game this past week against Western Kentucky, go on FreelancePictures.com or RollTideBama.com and look at all the pictures that Lance took uh, pre-game, uh, during the game, and post-game. He's got some wonderful pictures there. Lance does a great job, so please check his sites out and, and look at those pictures. And I also want to thank my sponsor, Karen Cottingham, realtor right here with the Williams Group in Tuscaloosa of Keller Williams. Uh, she is available for all your real estate needs. You can check, uh, check her out on our website at dccapstonereport.com. You can click on her picture there. You can take her to her all of her listings that she can show you right here in the state of Alabama. She's, she's your real estate agent all across the state of Alabama. And you can look at all of her listings there, and you can also contact her there. You can also call her on the phone at 205-887-4008. So a big shout-out to Karen Cottingham, one of our sponsors here. I uh, couldn't do this without her uh, sponsorship. And, of course, RollTideBama.com and FreelancePictures.com. So go to our website. We don't talk about it much, but go to DCCapstoneReport.com. Look at the pictures you find there that Lance has posted. Uh, you know, Look at our page, like our page, so we can get, some, get you there. Look at our sponsors and, and go and, and uh, check out their pages as well. So thank you all for tuning in to listen today for our podcast uh, this week. Uh, in our first segment, we're going to look at a review of the game against Western Kentucky. In our second segment, we're going to talk about the players of the game on offense and defense against Western Kentucky. And then in our third and final segment, we're going to preview the upcoming game against the South Florida Bulls. You're listening to the D.C. Capstone Report. The D.C. Capstone Report is featured each Tuesday morning on the Martin Houston Show at Tide 100.9. You can listen live at Tide100.9.com. Well, welcome back to the D.C. Capstone Report. Here in the first segment, we're going to review the game that we just played against the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Uh, We had predicted a 57 17 victory, but it looks like uh, Alabama didn't get the memo on that. They came out with a great defensive game plan and great defensive play. And Alabama won that game in grand fashion, 63 to nothing. I think they could have scored 100 points if they'd left in the starters all the way around and continued to play uh, deep, throw deep balls like they were able to do. But uh, you know, 63 to nothing is nothing to sneeze at. It was a great game all around. So let's take break it down for you and talk a little bit about this game against Western Kentucky. You know, a couple of things I wanted to see happen, happen in this game. Number one, we played a well-rounded offense game, and the offense was explosive. Uh, it was explosive, and it was consistent. Now, I've heard, I've heard some things going around the message boards, and I've heard that some things people talking about. And when I, re- when I read comments like, this is the same old Alabama making the same old mistakes, uh, to me, that just lets me know that you don't know, haven't checked out, the, the, looked, at the, looked at what was going on. You know, it, it, the first series that we came out on offense, there were all sorts of issues. There were external factors that had nothing to do with Alabama's play that happened on that. You know, you get, a, a, for example, and just let me explain to you, when, when you make statements, general statements like that, sweeping generalities, it really exposes you as to how much you really know about what happened in the game. What really happened on that first series where we had to punt and couldn't, couldn't establish a, a drive uh, had nothing to do with what you're talking about, what, it ha- what the talking heads out there and the message board are talking about. What it had to do with was circumstances. There was a communication issue with the headsets first off the bat that delayed the start of the game. So everything was thrown off sync, out of sync. 
our our coaches in the box had to come down and they were trying to get down to the field to call the plays the players on the field couldn't hear in the headset they'd practice all that so they had to wait for get signals from the sideline that caused a problem in the first uh first series immediately out of the gate our starting left tackle who has been in that position all spring Caden proctor gets injured during warm-ups so that throws a monkey wrench into the plan it was it, coach the board said it caught me by surprise of course it did so then instead of the backup who'd been practicing on the left side playing, the next best available player was Elijah Pritchett, who had, uh, who, who Wilkin informed me had obviously got the start over at right tackle, but he was going to be competing in the mix in that area. We'd heard all leading up to it. So he slid out and played left tackle. He'd not gotten any reps out there at left tackle. So that was one of the miscommunications that happened on the first sack of the game. And then on that play, that second down play, uh, we had the left tackle, our uh, Elijah Pritchett, our starting left guard, Tyler Booker, and our starting center, Parker Brailsford, all lose their helmet. So that caused us to have three starters immediately go out, have to replace them, and that's what caused the confusion on the third down play that we didn't get a first down. So all of that has had nothing to do with what happened last year. All of those things happened, uh, uh, external things that we didn't weren't able to control. When we got the ball back at the beginning uh, of the se- second drive, our offense showed what it can do, what it's capable of. I thought Jalen Milrow played an excellent game. There was no passer on any day during that football weekend that had a better day than Jalen Milrow as far as consistency. He was the most uh, efficient uh, uh, passer. He only threw two incompletions, no interceptions, uh, two t- uh, three touchdowns. So we're talking about a, a player who had a phenomenal game, did a great job. And what I liked about Jalen Milrow on offense uh, was that Jalen Milrow showed his growth in reading his progressions. Uh, three of the f- touchdown passes that he threw, the three touchdown passes he threw, two to Ryan Williams and one to Kendrick Law. On those three passes, all of them were in the third and fourth progression at the time he made the throw. You can look at him, you can read, you can study the film and be educated about how much growth he's had in that area instead of making uh, flippant statements about no change. Been great change. Jalen Miller had a great change. The offensive line has had a great change. They all play with consistency even though Caden Proctor was injured. So I thought that was, that was good. The people that rotated in, even on the second team, did a good job. Our wide receivers did a good job adjusting to the ball. Adjusting to the uh, 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 running the running the routes, adjusting to the coverages. So, uh, you know that that was good. So overall, I thought our offensive production was good, and that's what something we wanted to look for. The second was explosive plays. We wanted to see Alabama make explosive plays. Well, they did in this game, and they were made by a concerted effort of both wide receivers, quarterbacks, linemen, and uh, running backs. All across the board, the whole whole offense was involved. Quarterback had to throw the ball, make great reads and progressions. Jalen Milrow did just that. Ty Simpson did that when he came in. Then the wide receivers had to get open and run the routes. They did that. Ryan Williams did had two great plays for long touchdown passes. Kendrick Law had a great touch across in the middle touchdown. Uh, then the running backs had to watch the holes, hit the holes that the offensive line were opening for them which had already gave time for the quarterbacks to throw the ball. That, that shows improvement. Then the running backs had to hit those holes, and we, we saw two long running back uh, plays uh, make touchdowns on. So uh, for those who say that they didn't see any improvement, didn't see any cha- change, same old, same old, I, I just say you weren't watching the same football game that the rest of us are watching. So I am so excited about seeing what this offense can do uh, in the coming weeks, but definitely showed marked improvement over last year. Let's move on to the defense. If anybody looked at Alabama's defense and thought that it wasn't improved from last year, I don't know what game you were watching again. Uh, This defense came out, and we were told that they they were going to fly to the ball, swarm defense, try to make plays, and they did just that. Uh, the statistics show that the leading rusher on uh, Western Kentucky's team had 18 yards rushing on 10 carries. That's a 1.8 average. The second leading rusher had 17 r- yards rushing, and that was the quarterback, T.J. Finley, on scrambles. And he, he averaged 2.4 yards rushing. So the defense did a great job of stopping the run, held the entire team to 42 yards. That was fantastic. 
And then look at the pass defense. The one thing that we said going in could be suspect was our pass defense. So when you look at what, the, what they were able to do, uh, they held T.J. Finley for 18 passing attempts, on, on 31 pass attempts to 18 completion. That's a QBR rating of 23.1. 23.1, a QBR rating. And then his backup didn't do much better. He was 4 of 9 uh, and had uh, a QBR rating of 11.1. So the, 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 the uh, cornerback safeties did a, did a great job. Of, of coverage, and we're talking about players that got the start here. Xavier Brown, freshman, gets a start. Uh, Xavier Mincy comes in and plays minutes early on in the first quarter. A Red Morgan, freshman, another freshman, comes in and plays minutes first first quarter. Redshirt freshman, Bray Hubbard, gets minutes first quarter. We see a lot of freshmen contributing and making plays and doing well uh, and getting a lot of experience. So, I'm excited about this defense. The second thing I'm excited about the defense is the running to the ball and making tackles. We, I told you that the, that the defensive linebackers could, could reap a benefit of playing in this particular scheme. And when you look at that, Jihad Campbell and Deontay Lawson both had a total of nine tackles apiece. Uh, Jihad Campbell had six t- solos and three, uh, uh, and Deontay Lawson had three solo tackles. They both had a tackle for loss, and Deontay Lawson had a pass defended. So those statistics don't lie. That middle linebacker position has really been good. And when you see Justin Jefferson come in and make p- plays as well, uh, it just made it made a difference in this entire uh, defensive uh, defensive scheme. And third, we put pressure on the quarterback. And I told you going into it last week that we were going to have to do that to win this ball game, and we did exactly that. Put pressure on the quarterback when it was needed. From our defensive linemen, uh, which, which included Tim Keenan uh, and, and uh, LT Overton and James Smith, who did a great job coming in, about probably the third or fourth defensive lineman to get in, they did, a good, did a great job uh, defending passes and putting pressure on the quarterback. So we did it from the defensive line, and we also did it from the that, that uh, Wolf Blitzer position. And, you know, Quay Russo gets a start. Uh, you know, guy who heard so much great about his athleticism gets a start. And then Q Robinson comes in in a situational play uh, to, to uh, uh, you know, run, run after the quarterback and got a huge sack on T.J. Finley on that first, first series that – Flipped the, flipped the script on us uh, and, and really got the crowd involved after it kind of delayed the start and everything and, 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 the, and, the, and the, all, the, all the problems on offense in the first series. That really jump-started us, that, that sack did uh, for momentum going to the rest of the game. So I think Alabama played a great game against Western Kentucky. Overall, I, I am pleased with a 63 to nothing victory. And I think it's time that all the naysayers give this team a break and let's see what they can do against the next team uh, next week against South Florida. Well, welcome back to the DC Capstone Report. We're so glad you joined us back here. Now we're going into the second segment uh, where we're going to play uh, talk about our players of the game on offense and our players of the game on defense. Let me remind you, couldn't do this with our sponsors, RollTideBama.com, FreelancePictures.com, and Karen Cottingham, realtor right here in Tuscaloosa with the Williams Group at Keller Williams. want to thank them all. And, of course, this could not be done without Lance Shores doing all of the work that he does on production. I just get here to get to talk about it. Uh, Lance puts, does all the work putting everything together. So I want to thank you all uh, for tuning in and listening, but also for those that help this podcast work every week. So second segment, offense. Who are the players of the game? Well, i got to start with my player of the game uh, on offense. First one's got to be Jalen Milrow. Uh, Jalen Milrow had a stellar day for a quarterback efficiency. Uh, he had a QBR rating of 98.7. You can't get much better than that, folks. He was 7 of 9 for 200 yards, three touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Zero interceptions. I've already told you in the first segment about his progression. His progression reads were great in this game. And some of those passes, he did hit the long ball, but he had some good uh, intermediate throws as well. The throw that he throw, threw to Kendrick Law was on the move, kept his eyes up, and went to his fourth progression there to hit Kendrick Law coming across the middle for a touchdown. And the second touchdown to Ryan Williams uh, was a great throw where he stepped up in the pocket and caught uh, Ryan Williams coming 
across the middle, probably 20-yard 20, 20 downfield throw, and then Ryan Williams did the rest of the run after catch, hitting it on into the end zone for a touchdown. His first throw to Ryan Williams was a deep ball that he caught it late on a fourth position and still had the power in his arm to get the ball all the way down there and hit him in stride uh, for a long touchdown uh, touchdown pass. So he did a great job. I think Jalen Milrow is one of my players on offense. My second player of the game on offense is uh, Justice Haynes. I think Justice Haynes had only had four carries in this game. But those four carries were for 102 yards and that one long touchdown run of 85 yards. Uh, he did such a great job rushing the ball and, 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 and really uh, hitting the holes and, and playing off of those linemen's holes and, and hit them, hitting them hard. Uh, I think Justice Haynes is the real deal. He's going to be a great back for Alabama for years to come. My third player on uh, offense has to be the fr- true freshman, Ryan Williams. He was a player that we spotlighted for you in spring practice. We spotlighted for you, I mean, in fall practice. We spotlighted you in the scrimmages, but we're hearing all these things. So watch out for Ryan Williams. He's a real deal. And, folks, he, he proved it. On two, two, play, two plays, he had two plays uh, for uh, uh, two touchdowns, 84 yards on the longest one. We had two catches for 139 yards, both were touchdowns. You can't get much better than that for a 17-year-old. Now, hear that again, folks. Ryan Williams is 17 years old. He won't turn uh, 18 until after this entire year is over with. He should be in high school right now talking about Friday night lights and going to the prom. Yet, he is playing against uh, high Power five competition or group five competition, uh, and playing so well uh, that it, that he that he gets two touchdowns on his very first time. He touched two times. He touches the ball. So, in my, my, he's going to be the real deal. He'll be that way. I saw him wearing that number two, and uh, he looked like he looked as explosive as the deuce uh, David Palmer did back in the nineties when he played. And I think that we really got a, uh, got a good opportunity to see him do even greater things as the years progresses and he gets even better. So my players on offense are Jalen Milrow, Justice Haynes, and Ryan Williams. Now let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. Well, it was hard to pick out on defense who was going to be the players of the game because there's so many good opportunities in this. I am so impressed with Kane Womack's uh, uh, defensive system. But really looks like that these players really took advantage of their opportunities to get on the field. And so I, I think that these are the four players on defense that I think did the best jobs in this game. So my first, my first player of the game on defense had to be Keon Sab. Keon Sab transfers in from Michigan. He wins a national championship with Michigan and then transfers to the team that they beat, barely beat, to get to the championship game. He comes in and buys in to Kalen DeBoer's uh, 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 co- coaching uh, he comes in and transfers in to the coach that they beat in the national championship game so here here we are Keon Savvy knows what a winner is like knows how to be a winner and he comes in with some great as a junior uh, with some experience but with an opportunity to make a difference and he made a difference in this game he had two interceptions in this game and uh, many of the listeners out there are going to know what I'm talking about here but to me with his length, with his ability to break on the ball and to get in front of defenders, he reminded me of another great player in Alabama history, and, that, um, and that's Eddie Jackson. If you watch his play, he looks a little bit like Eddie Jackson when he moves, his fluid movements, jumping the routes, and then he has the, has the wheels to take the ball back uh, when he makes those interceptions. So Keon Saab, he is, he, if he doesn't get injured, he could have an all-star uh, season here uh, and make an All-America team at that at that uh, safety position. So he's just that good, folks. My second player of the game is somebody that we talked about who was making some moves in the fall. I had I really didn't believe that he would start. I thought Q Robinson would get the start, but that's Quay Russo, number four redshirt freshman out of Montgomery. Uh, he has a motor, folks. He has the ability to get to the ball. And if you want to talk about some uh, some statistics, if you look at Quay Russo's statistics, and he didn't play the entire game, he played, uh, he, he he shared duties with uh, with uh, Q Robinson, but he had four tackles and one for loss, but he was all over the field from that Wolf Blitzer position. He was able to go in and blitz the quarterback, 
put pressure on the quarterback, make make them change the way they uh, stay in the pocket. Yeah, they, he just did a great job. So I am so proud of that young man um, showing up and making a difference in this game. So he, he is definitely a, a player to watch on that from that wolf position. But the player that ha- I think had the best game for Alabama as far as tackling perspective, and that has to be uh, the, the middle linebacker, Jihad Campbell. He had nine total tackles, six solo tackles, and one tackle for loss. But, folks, it, looks like, it looked like to me that every time he was in there, he was around the ball. His ability to run from sideline to sideline, his closing speed was so great in this game. Uh, just shows you how great of a, a player he is. When, when I think Deontay Lawson is the, he's the quarterback of it and calling the plays, but we are blessed with two great middle linebackers in here in Lawson and, and Campbell. So Campbell has to be one of my defensive players of the game. And finally, I couldn't go with just three. I had to pick a fourth. And that is the person I told you to look for early on to make a difference, to make a name for himself this year. And that's James Smith, number 23 defensive lineman. He comes into the game, probably was the fourth or fifth lineman off the bench to come in. But he makes three uh, tackles in the game. But what more impressive is they gave him credit for two passes defended. But I was at the game, and I believe he was in on more than two. But two that he batted down balls, which gave him – me a, a, a idea that he when he could even when he couldn't get to the quarterback he affected the quarterback with his length and his athleticism and ability to bat those balls down so watch for uh james smith to to continually make some some headway to get in games and disrupt the quarterback down the line so my players on defense were keon sab quay russell jihad campbell and james smith Well, welcome back to the DC Capstone Report. Today in the third and final segment, we're going to preview the upcoming game against the South Florida Bulls. Yep, they're coming up here, folks. We, we went down there last year, and they really, really took it to us. You know, that's the game that Jalen Milrow was benched. He didn't play at all. And they really, really took it to us last year down there. We came out barely with, with a victory. Uh, Ty Simpson came in and won the game for us after Buckner laid an egg. And Ty Simpson came in and, and took us to victory in that game. And that, after that game, when Jalen Milrow finally got to solidified as a starter. So, does the team have something to prove? Absolutely. But I don't think we have to go on revenge factor in this one. I think we play our game. In this game, we're going to be just fine. So, what do we have to do? I think, uh, first of all, let's look. What does our defense have to do to stop them? Because I think that's really where the, where the matchup is going to be able to watch. Can we stop their offense? Number one, their quarterback is really athletic and does a great job. Uh, I think Brown is their quarterback. He does a great job of throwing the ball. He's a good passer. He's a good runner. But they run an up-tempo style offense of which uh, we're going to have to learn how to play against. And so I believe that what we have to do is can our – I want to watch, can our defense match up with this up-tempo style, how they like to move and cause a pre-snap movement, and then immediately when they make a uh, any kind of gain, they come right back to the line of scrimmage with another play already called and keep running and keep running and keep running, trying to keep your players on the field, trying to wear them down, and trying to make them make mistakes. So if, if our defense can handle that up-tempo style, we can settle down. I think we have a great opportunity in this game to, to, to play really well. Uh, I do believe that they'll probably have some uh, – uh, plays make some plays in this game because i think that's the way you you're going to have to attack this defense is by making sure that uh you keep, keep us keep them off the field keep the players that are trying to substitute from being substituted and i think that's what you can do with this fast-paced offense that they have uh, secondly on defense i think we're going to, have to put some pressure on the quarterback we can't let him just run free folks because he has a good athleticism to make some plays with his legs and he can extend plays so we need to keep him in the pocket make him throw the ball Put pressure on him, make him throw the ball up for grabs, and intercept some of those passes. I look for Keon Sab, Malachi Moore to maybe have some more interceptions in this game as well. And we put a lot of pressure on him, have an opportunity to keep him in the pocket. I think if we, we can do that with this defense, especially with the speed of our middle linebackers and the speed of our outside backers, I think we can keep him in the pocket, uh, make him beat us with his throwing, throwing the ball. I believe we can stop their run. They don't have a greater running offense as, as, they have, as they've had in the past. I think they're going to rely on the up, up tempo uh, running of their quarterback to be their largest, long, uh, best rusher. So I think if we can stop him, we have a good, good, good chance of winning this game big. On offense, what do we have to do? 
Same thing we did against Western Kentucky. Go out there and play our game. Uh, make the throws when they're available. When they give us big play opportunities, take advantage of those big play opportunities and don't make mistakes. No fumbles, no interceptions. Take what they give us downfield when they give it to us and take what they give us a short field when they give it to us and run the ball, run the ball. I think Justice Haynes and Jam Miller both have big games in this one. I think Jillian Milrow has a big game. And I think that Jer- Jeremy Bernard, I think he's going to be been challenged a bit this, year, this week in practice. Uh, I think he is going to step up with a big game in this game as well uh, to compliment Ryan Williams and, and Kendrick Law in that wide receiving core. So I think Jalen Milrow comes out, hits on all cylinders, offense hits on all cylinders, and we have another blowout victory. I know that the, the, the point spreads in the 30s, and some people don't think we'll score more than 40, but I think we will. I think Alabama will win this ball game against South Florida 52-14. to 14. 52 to 14. Well, folks, that's all we have for the DC Capstone Report this week. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you come back next week to, to listen to us as, as we'll review this game against South Florida. But you get a chance to come out to the uh, to Dealey Stadium. A great opportunity for you to see a ball game uh, this week. I think it's going to be a little cooler. Come out. Let's pack that place. Let's make this year a home field advantage for us, just like South Florida tried to make it a home field advantage for them last year. So. Until next week, this is DC with the DC Capstone Report signing off with a big roll tide.